So hi everyone, my name is Justin Chang. I'm going to be giving a talk on called Designing Native Apps for a Group Class with Tech Demo. Um, and this is actually a live talk I'm giving Tech Demo. Um, the post. Alright, hello. Hi. Hello. Can't hear people. Um, but yeah. I know this noise is so hard to hear. Unless people are speaking on a mic or something. Um, right. So, okay, so, quick audio check. Um, people can hear me, right? Yeah. 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 Can you hear people? Uh, can't, I can't hear people. So, I, I guess if there's questions, stuff happens to the microphone or come on the stage and um, talk to the computer mic. Okay, great. So, um, audio good? Okay, let's start. So, um, this is, well, some of the APKs will eventually be posted to happyglass.com, which is a glass hack sort of thing. Um, so basically, this is designing native apps for Google Apps. Okay, so we'll start with a broad overview of what you get from the hardware class. This is from um, the deck section, um, sponsored by SparkFun, that um, we did. And so in this case, I just highlighted the sensors of interest that um, if you want to build some interesting sensor software, you might consider looking into. So this is a very high-level overview of BOSS dissected, and we'll begin with the uh, Synaptics touch button, which is a long strip on the edge of BOSS. Um, let's see, I guess it was demo. This is the touch pad, so unlike your classic touch screen, long, and well, it's a touch pad instead of a touch screen, so it's um, not responsive. We'll go over that later. But the dimensions is actually 1366 by 187, uh, which again, it's very different than your traditional ratio. Um, and there's also other sensors. The uh, Benson's 9 degree of freedom sensor with the gyroscope, accelerometer, and compass, um, each degrees of freedom. And we also have a display, the 640 by 360 uh, screen that's projected from the optics in front of you. Uh, so what does that mean? So actually, you see this glow right here. This glow right here is the screen being projected in front of you. Uh, the experience as a user is, I guess, quite different. I think as a user, you probably aren't as bold like, I guess, uh, instead of as a third person, I guess. It's kind of more like um, to see it blowing at you like this, um, right, this odd screen, this organization, okay, and, right, there's also a uh, noise cancellation microphone, which makes it great for stuff like hangouts and such, assuming that you have sufficient bandwidth, and there's a light sensor, which um, eventually show up other full halves with that, including a um, pyramid and a light like, trombone, glass trombone, stuff like that. Um, and then there's a camera, the usual crappy camera that you find on a lot of lower end phones. But um, this is, I guess, a developer dish. And eventually, there might be higher end cameras on the final release. Um, and there's also the speakers. These are bone production speakers. Um, the big issue is that it's not going to be 3D sound. So if you have a game that depends on 3D sound, like, for example, like the box blows up and then, you know, like fourth quadrant or something, and that's really crucial. Um, that's probably going to be an issue in design. Um, okay, so since this is a sensors talk, so let's go over how you pull sensors. This is pretty basic stuff, but um, you can check for sensors using package manager or use the location sensor APIs. And this is basically just all in the manual. Um, great, so we're probably interested in what sensors Glass has, at least the flipping down ones. So this is a screenshot of the sensors and some um, sample values. So there's the usual nine POF sensors, the accelerometer, the um, magnetic field orientation gyroscope, so that's from event sense, and um, there's also a light sensor, um, and also more values from event sense stuff. Um, and um, these are some sample values, here's the max range, and um, the light sensor is interesting, it goes any, anywhere from 0 to 64,000, and where, I guess you're probably wondering what the metric is with the scale, um, when it's a bright sunny day, it's about like 500 or like, it's never been more than 1,000, so I'm not sure 
how bright 64,000 brightness requirement for that is. Um, okay, and interestingly, there's no pressure sensor on glass, so you don't have altitude. You can get GPS, but um, so yeah, I guess I don't have it listed here. Um, so these are the glass sensors. Great, basic stuff. And if you've never pulled sensors before, here is the general recipe. Import the libraries, implement the sensor event listener, create the sensor, manage your instance, and on create, and then register sensors, and on resume, and then basically um, in the on sensor change method, you can do whatever you want the sensor to do. For example, you know, your sensor should like uh, rotate the camera, um, or things like that. Uh, great. Simple, right? Can't hear the audience, so I'll assume this is super simple. Okay, so sensor vision. So you actually get some data. However, this kind of requires further filter if you want to do more interesting stuff that requires precision, such as multi user games where the orientation of people's heads is pretty important. Um, so you can do some calendar filtering on that, and also you can you know, combine many more sensors here, not just the events and stuff, such as the light sensor with motion, camera with swipe, I guess that's pretty trivial. But um, yeah, um, sensor apps, combine the sensors, see if they're making cooler stuff. Um, you know, things that are more interesting than HTML5, where you can only access this router, so you have a lot of sensors as mentioned. Okay, so put output. Um, so the input sensors for Pugas, so there is the touchpad, as I mentioned, it's not a touch screen, and there's the camera, um, pretty low resolution, uh, light sensor, and then the event sense 90 OS sensors, and then compass, GPS, microphone, simple. Um, design sensor constraint, okay, this is the, this is where I mentioned earlier that, uh, unlike traditional touch screen design, um, you are not using a one-to-one -one ratio with touch to screen. And this might be a bit counterintuitive, especially if you're assuming that the user can finger touch on the actual bubble. Um, but there are different dis different constraints to work with for that. Um, so this should be rounded, but um, you can see that the ratio is very odd, display the touch, touch ratio. Um, and that's because, as mentioned earlier, the screen is 40 by 360, and zoom out. The um, touchpad is super long. The screen is a regular white uh, screen. So 640 by 360 and 1366 by 187. So trying to make things map one to one is generally not going to be the easiest, um, unless you mix and match sensor fusion stuff, as I'll show later on. Um, so, and also, you should do some sensor further filtering, more um, sensor fusion. The compass alone is off by, what, 15 degrees, which you may get into a while you're going to fall off a cliff or something dangerous. Very bad compass. Um, and then bone production speakers, and so the user must cover your noisy environment, um, noise pollution. And that also, because the bone conduction speakers are only on right here, you basically don't have the sound. It's just you kind of hear buzzing, um, vibrating on your head. And then it has a tiny battery, 570 milliamps. Um, OK, an apple modality is you, know, you have a display. It's same floating roughly in front of you, a computer projector and on the optic, and there um, is bone connection, as mentioned, and um, the, I guess the most interesting part is that the real world is part of your output modality. So try to make semi-transparent or reality connected apps, I guess. Um, yeah, so um, to make an APK of a box, i.e. a native for glass. Um, you easily develop for Android ice cream sandwich, but um, keep in mind it's a different form factor. Touchpad doesn't have one to one screen, which basically means that you're going to have to redesign the input mode uh, mode for your book and stuff. Um, and bone production, you don't have 3D sound. And it's kind of a limited device, um, but it's kind of a beta edition. So consumer release might have better specs on 
hardware and a little battery life. Okay, so overview. Okay, the fun part. Live demo. So um, I'll start by showing the DriverFire platform. So DriverFire is basically a natural UI platform for Google Plus. Um, combines a lot of cool stuff, but I guess I'll show out something that I think is a pretty cool way to demo uh, Glass apps. So um, a big problem with demoing any Android app is that there is no um, way without extreme frame loss to demonstrate what's on your Android or say your Glass screen live on a projector. Um, because Glass actually doesn't support MHL, it only has a micro uh, USB that um, even connected to AS gives like what, five, five frames per second, it's pretty bad. So this is um, dryer fire, it used to call it glass shootout. So this is kind of what the experience on glass is like for the app. As you're rotating your head around, your view is transforming and what you're seeing is kind of out of field of view in the top right hand corner of your eye. But you can also adjust glass to you know, shift your view and stuff. So um, basically gyrofire lets you tap to shoot or tap to fire. So I'm going to aim my head this way and tap. Did you guys see how it's uh, tap to fire? No, um, did it just stop? Yeah, it's stuck on sensor fusion. It's live. When did it stop on sensor fusion? Probably. Uh, uh, do you want to try to restart the screen share? Yeah, uh, you should have stopped me then, I think, because I think I, I went through a lot after sensor fusion. Uh, uh, yeah, I Stop sharing, start sharing, share screen. Oh, wow, the revolution is on. Okay, I, I just restart the share. Is it. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's on the right. It's... Is it. Okay, does it say IO in big letters? No. Yeah. IO? IO, okay. yeah. Yeah? So the screen is back again, right? Yeah. Oh, the resolution, yeah, I'm set Um, is it mirroring the resolution, or? No. Uh, how bad is the resolution? Uh, it's pretty Okay, people can read or something, right, I guess? I guess so. Okay. This is legible, since so the design constraints. Um, okay. Okay, so sensor design constraints. Um, okay, so it, I, I guess for future note, if the screen stops, just like notify me immediately because otherwise I'll kind of go on assuming you're seeing what I'm seeing, which is awkward. Um, so, design constraints. Um, so, as I mentioned, the ratio is not one to one, it's really um, the fraction looks kind of weird. The um, compass is off, and you should compensate for that by using sensor fusion, motion fusion, helmet filtering, things like that. Um, and then there's phone connection speakers. Um, you should basically be aware that 3D sound um, is, um, well, I, I, this is, I'm repeating what I said. This is interesting. Uh, what did I show earlier? Um, yeah, FaceTime. So I was demonstrating that, um, again, the audio comes from this thing right here, it vibrates your head. So it's basically not going to be 3D. So um, depending on what you design, sound. Because a sound is another way of input, so it might be a big thing depending on how your design is focused. But um, be aware that it's not currently 3D. And output modality, um, 640 by 360. And this is same projected roughly one meter frame rate. Again, this is the idea of this light right here is actually projecting from onto the optic. And it looks like it's floating in front of you and um, bone protection, and I already mentioned that. And then um, I guess the most interesting part about the upper modality of glass is that it happens in the real world. And great, so basically making an APK or IEA 
native app, well, depends on how native you go, but um, is basically um, developing for Android ice cream sandwich, but basically for a different form factor. And as mentioned, the touchpad is a one-to-one, -one, which means that you know, don't rely on buttons that require exact, you know, fingers pressing on it or something. But there's other ways to get by that using other sensors, um, such as I'll demonstrate soon in the Jarfire platform. And also, right now, the device is pretty limited, actually. Um, so, yeah. And small battery. So right now, I'll go directly to live demos. Dryfire platform. Okay, so Dryfire is basically an actual UI repair and I Google Glass or platform. Use a lot of cool stuff, primarily center fusion. The AR stuff is kind of, um, I'll show a demo of that, but it's not publicly on the platform yet. So the idea is that you aim, tap, and fire, which can actually be generalized into a lot more than just a game. So I'll start with the game demo, which is a classic one. So just to make sure, can you guys hear? Can we still, can you see the screen right now? Yes? Okay, great. So I have a head rotating around. Um, and this is kind of like a Picarious glass experience. Um, so this is what you would see on the top right hand corner if you were wearing glass. So um, it's been a bunch of bunny boxes, apparently, but this is the most basic demo. So um, I'm going to aim for one of the boxes. And I'm going to tap. So you notice how my finger or the virtual finger of the pet tap the sidebar, and that instigates the shooting action. So here we go. Tap. And aim. Let me make the screen a little bigger. Um, okay. okay, so this is dry fire. Um, so obviously the uh, wireframes can be replaced by meshes. So in this case, I replaced it with goats. Uh, yes. I'll teleport this goat right here. There. And got teleported somewhere around me, maybe behind me. I'm going to aim right here and teleport this goat. And teleport. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, the idea is tap to instigate an action. I'll switch to laser now. And Gotta be precise. It's a great way to practice like fit orientation, location, or whatever. Uh, it's fitness. Okay, so yeah. Um, and if you guys want to try this out, this is running on the glass that you should see on stage that Bird is wearing. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. Move your head around. Uh, sensor fusion and cast the four orientations. So right now, um, I'm actually showing the demo by just rotating my mouse around, but this also maps to the head being um, head rotation, changing your camera, and each time you have your crosshair aim, you tap, just tap on the side of the glass, the touchpad, and tap to shoot. This is a gyro fire demo. And there's also extension of that. Okay, so what if you don't want to shoot stuff? What if you want to play a musical instrument, say, uh, yes, this stuff. So just the same thing, move your head around. Okay. Uh, okay, again, this is a little tech demo, but the idea is that gyro beats. Okay, so instead of tapping the fire, this is tap to music or tap to play some beats, uh, real music, right? Okay.
So same idea. Instead of tapping to fire or tapping to kill something, tapping to teleport goats, um, you're tapping to play piano keys. Um, I think it doesn't take that all, um, but if you hold down with two fingers, you can then play the piano keys that. Um, so, and okay, this is the example of using, um, this is gyro play. So, as I'm tapping, I'm still free to play ball. So, I, I guess using this, you can, you know, use it as any cursor. Um, use the gyroscope as a cursor at the mouse point. So, um, the point I'm sculpting is the cross here. But um, I'm rotating the sphere, the clay ball, sculpting the clay ball by uh, each time I tap, I'm basically uh, sculpting it. Um, and I can also toggle by using two buttons, I guess, well, um, in this sort of um, virtual machine-ish demo, um, I don't have, I haven't yet included a um, mesh with two fingers, so it's just kind of a generic hand. But right now, um, I actually two-finger pressed it. When I two-finger press it, instead of uh, pulling, it uh, pushes. So, Basically. And the nice part about keeping your tapping is that you can then hold it on your glass without the um, glass OS um, exit configuration putting your app. So glass OS is interesting. So your traditional Android has like a home button and like you know settings button. If you press and hold the home button, it gives you you know options to, like load the app and stuff or you know switch between apps. So um, glass has a couple of operating system wide hand gestures. If you touch hold with your finger you um, basically, it will bring you back to the, the Google home screen. So um, it's just both annoying and something good to know, I guess. If you design your app to depend on holding one finger, you know, it based on holding or three fingers, which um, are not interpreted as the operating system wide override. So um, yeah, this is Jaro Play, which you know, uses the idea of tap to fire or things. Again? Yeah. How long has it been frozen? Oh, just a few seconds. Okay, is it back again or a frozen still? Uh, it's still frozen. Oh, we restart the Skype again. Yeah, just restart the screen share. All right, stop sharing, start sharing. And is it back? Yes. Okay, great. So, as you can see, rotating. Uh, my strange sculpture of the tap to sculpt. Um, okay, great. Tap to sculpt. Um, okay, so you guys have seen that uh, the tap to sculpt in the clay ball, right? Like uh, the clay ball, it looks like it's being sculpted as the head is moving around. Okay, great. Um, so. Right, so the Drive Fire platform. So basically these are demos that I guess try to show that the input is to rotating your head, but um, if I were to just show the screen pass of it, it would be, um, well you wouldn't quite see the head rotating. So, and this is almost real-time chromated client streams. I guess basically just get a socket server running on glass and then send the signal and then broadcast it back to chromated clients and then you can kind of remotely track head position and last view. Um, right, so three demos. Um, there's actually more interesting demos as well that we might show later. Uh, it's just Minecraft for boss and stuff with to load data on um, some tech French maps um, from the Strap Hackathon. Um, I guess you can check out um, Styles app earlier on. It's on um, right, so, and now something kind of more fun, I guess. Uh, Glass Trombone actually isn't using the Gyro Fire um, platform, so I'm going to actually just show it directly on Glass. Um, so, showing things on Glass means that this is what happens when I show something on Glass. Uh, the frame rate is super bad. I'm using something called Android Screen Monitor, which basically grabs stuff in the screen buffer. So, uh, yeah, it took a lot of people like this whole five seconds or something insane. Um, okay, so as I'm sliding, I guess I'll go back to the. Okay. 
Okay. Um, stop sharing screen, share screen. Start. Great. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me? Yes. Good? Okay. Great. Um, so, enter screen monitor. And just So, so basically, you know, I have Alan in my head and fingers. Um, Last trombone. Okay, so as I'm sliding my finger, um, there's a um, the trombone handle is being controlled by where I'm sliding my finger on this um, side pad, um, side touch pad, I guess, secondary touch pad rather. Um, and there is a light sensor in the front. When I cover it up. And open it. Can you guys kind of hear it? Um, yes, yeah, so right now um, there isn't quite a standard for getting audio out from glass to the computer. But basically, every time I open and close this, I'm blowing a note in the trombone. So this is. Um, you know, kind of just, you know, playing with different sensors and mapping it to different musical instrument motifs. Um, so open and close to blow notes and then slide your finger to, um, slide it to basically uh, change the handle or the frequency of the trembo. Um, And you can also jump from note to note by, instead of sliding, you just kind of tap. But sliding works pretty well. Um, interestingly, sliding gets by the operating system wide. Um, I just said to go to the Google screen, uh, that if you touch hold, that sort of happens. But if you just kind of slide, it's not as good as touch hold, obviously. Um, so yeah. And that's glass trombone. Um, and then, let's see, skip the Bluetooth Wi-Fi. Uh, okay, great. Um, I guess I'll show a demo of the AWR degree stuff. Um, okay, so meanwhile, um, actually before I show that, I'll show, um, hmm, where is, I think I'm going to slide somewhere. Okay. Um, see, I guess I'll show the, um, being from earlier, the creating stuff. Creates fire. Okay, so, um, so yeah, this is a basic example of Minecraft like thing on class. So this is um, a creative fire mode from the creative fire mode from Gyro Fire. So each time, instead of uh, Blowing something up, although I can't do that here, it's creates fire, I'm just dropping cubes. Now, when I aim one of the cubes, I can blow it up. Um, great. And just like how the other thing, if I swipe, I can change to different things. Um, in this case, I went to laser mode. So, you guys can't quite hear the audio, but, uh, and goats. All right, let's put some goods in front and blow this thing up. Teleport. All right. Um, okay, you can't hear the audio right now, but um, the audio sounds like this. Okay, that's laser mode. You're hearing laser beats. Um, and when I swipe, I'm back in goat mode. And I guess in this case, it looks like a really tiny, so I should really size them. Boom! Teleported. And, okay, so, and of course, explosion. Boom! Okay, so that's the audio for that. Um, so, I guess the idea of tap to fire and using the gyroscope as a, as like a new way to, um, yeah, it's almost like you can swipe for your mouse, kind of. Um, right, I'm actually going to switch last. Okay. 
and switch to another pair of glasses. Um, basically, I have to paint apps. I read this based on the other pair of glasses, then I'm switching to this one. So, hello. Yes, switch to this one. And. Alright, this is an old demo from Marcos VR. Um, right. And, great. So, uh, I got to restart ASM. Great. Okay. So, again, the framing here is pretty bad. Um, but it shows the idea that, you know, there's enough, barely enough processing power to do some slam on, on blast. So I'm going to find a few things here this track. Uh, in this case, <laughs> why not? Why not? Alright, we have a grand piano on design pattern. And it's going to a cube, and it's a bench. Um, and, all right, this is the popular tangle. Like dinosaurs. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll put the face time on for the skeptical ones. Um, will this work? Uh, hello. So, right there, and design patterns. Um, and can you even do this? This works a lot better with audience. You can just ask someone in the audience for like a random piece of paper or something. Um, let's see. Um, so, um, <laughs> um, actually, we can just do a little demo, like someone has a piece of paper, or say, I don't know, the event batch or whatever, actually, just anyone put a piece of paper with some design on it, um, then, like, you know, show the, um, slam real time stuff happening. Um, actually, I'll just visit a random website. Okay, audience, give me a website. Yeah, there's a random website, and then we're going to load, we're going to slam the website. Anybody have a website that they would like to? Um, okay. Um, any websites? Any websites? Anybody? Google. Uh, what, any website? Google. Google Doodle, yes. Okay, that's a good idea. Let's see, Google Doodles. I can't spell Google Doodle. Okay, so any particular Google Doodle? Um, let's see, lots of Google Doodles. Let's try, ow, it's still pretty free. Um, okay, let's go for something that's decent contrast and variety, I guess. So this one. All right, can do this. Yes, can you can you see me? Oh, there we go. Ah, all right. Yeah, this is what I'm seeing on my glass. Okay, that's a doodle, and I'm moving my head. Yeah, all right. So we're tracking this doodle right here. Um, and, oh, okay, I'll send that, yeah, okay, so, basically, slam for king on pretty much anything, um, yeah, so, it's 
pretty laggy on ASM. It actually runs at okay. I mean, it runs at close to 30 FPS on class, which is pretty surprising. Uh, ASM, again, this is from the screen buffer, so um, hopefully you understand that what you're seeing here on the entry screen monitor right here is a uh, huge latency. Um, but glass is actually slow. Focus. Okay, I see. Basically, now we're out of the field of view of glass, so defocus. Okay, refocus. Great. So, um, yep. Google Ditto. Any other requests for those gaps go? Because I guess these are really. I mean, I, I could have, like, you know, just like all the common Google messages, you know, create them like markers in advance or something. But um, that would be pretty random, though. Um, I guess for fun, I'll try another random one. Something that looks interesting. Um, yeah, just so this is for Slam. Zoom out. Okay, so this case it's actually it doesn't have enough contrast. Ooh, okay. Uh huh. Good. Well, I'm now it's medium. Let's see. You know. All right. Here we go. Oh. And let's switch over to bench. Thanks, sir. All right. So I I assume the screen hasn't stopped, right? You guys are seeing the um the I'm stream. Um. Cool. So yeah, basically I did this on a new surface. Uh, this is the Marcus AR computer vision. Um. Oh, right. Basically, there's I guess several different ways to do AR. I, mean, I guess I'll go to a brief discussion on this. Um, so what you just saw is um, slam, markless. Um, so looking for POIs. So in this case, looking for the point crossings. Um, so there's another more common ways of recognition, which is more OCR based. Um, so it could also be that uh, you say you see an ad and you want to like find out more information about it, or you know QR code barcode. QR and barcode is pretty simple. You can just use ebook crossing, which is pretty much good enough for most purposes. Um, um, and but in this case, though, it's the step more than just decoding. Um, it's also being able to unfurl a host tensor so that you can do both the object placement, um, so just what you saw earlier. Um, and it's actually running pretty hot, actually. Last off, it runs my head. Um, yeah, so those of you hanging out for demos so later, uh, later on, rather, um, be aware that glass gets hot if you have, it's running for a bit. And actually, you can you can basically burn glass out. I basically was just like running. Um, it's really intense shooting game, a lot more intense than this. Um, <laughs> and just playing that for like about 30, 40 minutes, and like glass got really hot, and then it just like it just shut off and and I was actually afraid that the whole thing burned stuff, but um, you know, it got charged and yeah. Um you can actually burn the glass up by like, over blocking foot and stuff. Um great. So basically um I have more demos and stuff, but um yeah, this is odd because I can't see you guys. I'm not sure what the audience back is, if this is clear, if it's not clear or um or demo request or anything. So I get um, in the remaining time, which is I think we have 10 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes, um, questions or uh, demo requests. Um, and I guess here's my contact. If you have questions, feel free to uh, email, tweet. Um, my Twitter handle is just yosan. And uh, email is yosan at soy, which is my same backwards. And um, my phone number is also a permutation of my first name. So four, five, seven, seven, yosan. Um, and I'll post slides eventually, um, but it's on Twitter. I'm usually posting on Twitter, not really to get blogging. No. Too much cool stuff going on. Uh, okay, so meanwhile, any questions or requests? Um,
gyro plotter, is it a tool that she moves, or what is it a third party tool that she uses? Uh, do you repeat the question? Sure. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you write gyro five or find it? Uh, okay, so Gyrofire is my uh, mini startup that I just packed together really for like, I mean, it's, it, I guess from a lot of startups being mini seconds, it could be a full startup, but basically it's just gyroscope. Um, I, I can also add some wrappers for the AR stuff that you just saw, but um, it's kind of just the extension of something that seems to work pretty well, which is aim, tap, fire, or, you know, and also using your head as a motif to move around. So this is, um, I guess, eventually publicly available. There's gyrofire.com, but I, most of these sites are like uh, private data currently. Um, but I plan to release this thing pretty soon, as well as a some way people would download APK, even though there's no class app store, and doing regular users and having to tell them how to ADB install, that would be interesting support wise. But, um, Jar of Fire, um, so I guess to answer the question, Jar of Fire is something that I made, but um, it's kind of more of a hack in the sense that it literally was a startup put together in like uh, a weekend. Well, I mean, I guess it was fleshed out like over a month or so. It's like a summer startup, you know. Um, but yeah, um, gyro fire, and so feel free to ask me questions or email me if you want like, uh, beta access to gyro fire, uh, at the SNN, so I 